Hello and welcome to the Skills Focus on Innovators Best Practice event for 2021. My name is Denise Watson and I'm your host for today's Best Practice event to celebrate the upskilling and innovation accomplishments of local businesses which have been achieved through working with the expertise of our six further education colleges. We have an opportunity today to recognise the hard work of those employers and colleges and to celebrate the ongoing success of the Department for the Economy's Skills Focus and Innovate Us programmes. As with many events this year, we've had to adapt to comply with COVID restrictions, so unfortunately we cannot have a live event as we usually would. However, we can have a limited number of people in the studio today and I'm delighted to say that we will get an opportunity to hear from the Economy Minister as well as being joined by some of the employers who have availed of the Skills Focus and Innovate Us programmes over the last year to tell us firsthand how their businesses have benefited from the support. Just to take you through today's proceedings, shortly we will hear from Gordon Lyons MLA, Minister for the Economy, who will explain the important role these programmes play within his department's strategic plans. We will then chat with the stars of today's event, the employers and colleges who make the aims of the Innovators and Skills Focus programmes a reality. We will also hear from the department's Skills Director, Graeme Wilkinson, and it will also be joined by Beverly Harrison, the Department's Director of Further Education. So for anyone watching who is not familiar with the Innovators and Skills Focus programmes, they are both delivered exclusively for the department by our six local further education colleges. Skills Focus is open to businesses with fewer than 250 employees. It aims to increase the skills levels and employability of a business's existing workforce to qualifications at level two and above. Innovatus enables small businesses with fewer than 50 employees to acquire skills to engage in innovation activities. Through the programme, small businesses can avail of mentoring from a college expert to work on projects aimed at developing new or modified products, processes or services in a wide range of sectors. To get us underway, I am very pleased to introduce the Economy Minister, Gordon Lyons MLA, who has taken time to share his thoughts and appreciation on another very successful year for Skills Focus and Innovate Us. Thank you, Denise, for the warm welcome and introduction. Today we are celebrating successes in both the Innovate Us and Skills Focus programmes over the last year. These two programmes are well established at the forefront of my department's commitment to help upskill Northern Ireland's small and medium sized businesses. However, I think it is especially important to take time out on this occasion to recognise the achievements of the programmes during what has been a very challenging year for us all. Despite the many difficulties, our further education colleges and employers have worked together to develop a very successful year for both programmes. I recognise the significant efforts of the colleges. They reacted very quickly to adapt teaching delivery throughout the COVID-19 restrictions. By swiftly moving both programmes to online delivery methods, they ensured that the huge demand for skills support from employers was met. My department is committed to providing support to employers to ensure that their skill needs are met. By fully funding both of these programmes over the last year, we have been able to give businesses a helping hand to develop the skills of employees and encourage diversification and innovation during a period of unprecedented change. The success of Skills Focus and Innovate Us, even during a pandemic, only served to demonstrate the appetite local businesses have to develop and innovate. I am delighted that today some of those businesses have the opportunity to relay their experiences of the support provided by our programmes. Looking forward, we know that we need to increase the skill levels of those in employment and to improve Northern Ireland's performance as a region in terms of innovation activities. My department recently launched a consultation on our new skills strategy, Skills for a 10x Economy. Skills and innovation will be at the heart of Northern Ireland's economic recovery and the success of that will be built on the talent and drive of our local businesses. In conclusion, I want to offer my congratulations to all of the businesses who have availed of Skills Focus or Innovate Us and wish them continued success for the future.
Thank you, Minister Lyons. And now we have an opportunity to meet some of the participants of the Innovate Us programme over the last year. Joining us today, I'm delighted to say we have three employers and three representatives from the business engagement teams from the Further Education Colleges. Now, due to social distancing rules due to COVID, unfortunately, we can't all sit on the one stage. But joining us today are Damien Mills from Performance Without Barriers and David Phelan from BMC. Also joining us, Shira McAloran from Carrie Kitchen and Brenda Callahan from SRC. And finally, thanks to the wonder of modern technology, Sharon McNulty from Serenity Sparks Joy and Karen Quinn from SWC and they are joining us on screen from the studio just next door. So a big welcome to you all and thank you for thank taking you. the time to come today to talk about your involvement on the Innovate Us project. Damien if you don't mind I'm going to start with you. Just tell me about your involvement and uh, your business and what you set out to do through the programme. So Thanks. I'm working uh, developing um, virtual reality for people with disabilities seeing if it's possible to use this new technology to uh, see new affordances in, in making music. And so I came up with an idea, a plan, I pitched it, it was successful, and then I approached the Innovate Us program to upskill in some of the areas I realized was going to be needed once I realized that COVID-19 was going to affect my original idea. So I approached uh, David at Innovate Us and they came with two wonderful tutors who I worked with for over a year now. And you sound very positive, it's all going from straight, strength to strength. Um, from there on, I went and applied to Queen's University, to the Sonic Arts Research Centre for a PhD in music, and I got the place. Excellent. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Ashira, we move across to you now. Tell me about your business, and would you say it was innovative before you did your innovative Innovate Us project? We, we are a food manufacturer for producing a healthy ready meals, but we are focusing on Southeast Asian meal. Um, whenever we started, um, I only doing the cook from home. It's only two of us. And then there's a lot of um, a small businesses around us that have been approaching that if we can stock our meals in their shop, um, that's when I go to Southern Regional College and meet Brenda. So um, they're helping me to upscaling our business. Um, now we have over 20 staff. We've been outgrown our place twice. So um, start from home. And then at the moment, we're building a factory proposed for um, food manufacturing. Shira, what would you say your business's approach to innovation has changed? And how has it changed since you've had the Innovate Us experience? Uh, it has changed really good because I'm starting uh, with two employees and then now we're stocking 20 shops across Northern Ireland and then also we all, we just received uh, from Aldi so we, we got into the Grow with Aldi program which is uh, given opportunity to supply their 145 stores across Ireland. That's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, may I bring you into the conversation now. Uh, Sharon, um, tell me about your business and were you able to keep developing your idea or any others after your time on Innovate Us? I'm a professional organiser and Con Marie consultant. I'm now Platinum Con Marie consultant, so I was trained by Marie Kondo. Um, I go into clients' homes and their businesses and I help them declutter and organise so they only ever have to do it once in their lifetime. Not every day, not every weekend, just once. So that during the restrictions I wanted, I couldn't get into people's homes to help them. So I wanted to find a different way of helping them. So I created a course that would do so. And this is where Karen um, comes in. She has been amazing. She has sourced everything that I needed and um, even helped me put the course together, all that technical side that I just couldn't have done. We've heard a lot of praise for all the colleges here, so I think it's only right that we bring in um, the college representatives. First of all, David, if I can come to you about Damien, did you work um, with the business to meet the challenges um, and, and did you, li you listen to what he needed, what help he needed? It's that initial consultation to uh, you know, speak with Damien and I suppose understand where he needs to get to, what he's trying to achieve, and then really matching and tailoring 
the training available within the college under any of it us to um, sort of bring Damon along that sort of I suppose, innovation escalator um, with respect to virtual reality and really I suppose um, you know, Damien had certain skills to already bring to the table but really um, helping Damien plug some of those gaps um, to help him develop the, the art for VR music projects. Yeah. From the college's perspective, how could you sell the Innovators project to other businesses? I suppose it, I always say it is real confidence building. So um, particularly um, the area I work in within sort of creative and digital and emerging technologies, um, sometimes people are scared of technology or, or scared of doing something new. Um, and it's really the Innovators program gives that sort of one-to-one -one guidance, mentoring. Thank you very much, David. No worries. I'm going to move across now to Brenda. Brenda from SRC, you were mentioned when Shira was talking about the help that she has received with her Carrie Kitchen uh, business. Um, how did you work with her business to meet her challenges? We were able to kind of put a plan in place of really, you know, what Shira wanted out of this. Um, obviously, Shira felt there was some technical gaps missing, so the Innovate Us program was perfect um, to kind of really fulfil these, these gaps. So it was really going through each stage to kind of make sure um, and build the business up slowly. Um, and kind of put a, a process in place, a bit of a plan in place with regards to the products that she had, um, you know, kind of compiling the recipes through to every aspect with regards to the what needs to be on the pack for a retail launch. How does it make you feel when you go into a shop and you see Shira's product sitting there and know that you've been a part of it through Innovators? Yeah, I know it's fantastic, it's absolutely brilliant. And I mean, every week goes past, every month goes past, she's getting, you know, Carrie Kitchen are getting another listing. So it's just brilliant to see the growth in the company from when we originally sat down and had the chat when there was two people. And now as, as there's 20 people there and listings are growing every week. So it's just fantastic. And last but not least, uh, joining us is uh, Karen from Southwest College. Karen, um, what do you think the college gets out of working on a project like the one you've worked on with Sharon? Oh, I feel um, happy to be able to achieve and, and meet all their requirements and needs. Um, and it's good to see at the end of the project that they're happy and satisfied of what has been delivered and, and it moves their business forward and also that they're happy and they're upskilled and feel more confident. I can tell you've just loved this so much by the smiles um, on your faces just yeah, today. Yes. Um, it, it's so positive. Um, just to finally, Karen, how would you, from the college's perspective, sell the Innovators programme to other businesses? Um, I would definitely sell the Innovatus programme to other businesses. I think it's vital for businesses to be able to avail of the support and services that they receive from this programme, um, like the expertise and the knowledge that can be shared and upskilled to the businesses is vital um, for them to be able to um, grow their business. Um, just Thank to you. finish off, I'd like to speak to the business uh, um, representatives again. Uh, would you recommend this support to other businesses that you've had, Damien? Absolutely, Denise. Um, I think it's been incredibly well designed. It's very timely in regards to uh, the current need for um, remote working. And it's very individualised, as in people do listen and they adapt over time as well to changing needs. So, absolutely recommended. It's opened up so many avenues for you now, hasn't it? Too many, I think. <laughs> uh, one of the hardest thing I have at the moment is uh, trying to, you know, focus in on things that I can, that, that um, myself and my supervisors have to chat about how to make the most out of the opportunities that are now available yeah. to me. Thank you, Damien. And I understand, Brenda, on behalf of Shira, you have won awards. Tell me about this. I put an application. I helped um, Shira put an application for the Platinum um, Innovators Award. Um, from the Department for the Economy. So Shira uh, won that hands down, that award, has got that award. Um, it, really, the, it really shows that there's been real great innovation in the company and also that it's made a commercial impact um, to the economy. Thank you. And Shira, um, how has Innovative Innovate Us supported you and how has it been so beneficial for your business? It's really beneficial for our business because um, without the programme Innovate Us, we wouldn't be as we are at the moment, like from just a really small business and uh, we are growing ourselves twice already. And um, there's a big plans like in the future. So like I couldn't recommend the program enough.
Thank you. And Sharon, uh, finally, um, what has it meant for you and what are your plans for the future now having got all these tips and information from Karen? Um, it, this whole project has opened my business up to a global audience. It means that I, I'm not just, um, I suppose, local now. I can take this anywhere in the world and that to me is absolutely priceless. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, thank you everybody and all the college staff, of course, for taking the time to come and share your experience with us today. Thank you, thank you very much. Now we're going to hear from Graham Wilkinson, the Skills Director for the Department for the Economy. Graham, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. You're going to tell us a little more about these two fantastic skills programmes that the department has to offer. Thank you, Denise. Uh, absolutely delighted to attend today's event to celebrate the achievements of Innovate Us and Skills Focus. We would dearly love to have had uh, an in-person event uh, given the success over the last year. However, that's not been possible given the current restrictions. I am, however, delighted that we have been able to accommodate a selection of individuals who have experienced the programmes, as well as the college staff who have played such an important role in delivering the training. I really do think it is important to pause and reflect on the achievements over the course of the last year. And in particular, I would like to congratulate the teams across the colleges for their hard work and determination in delivering this successful outcome. I also want to recognise the partnership working with the local business community. They too have invested time and effort in upskilling their teams which I think is incredibly important. The workplace across all sectors of our economy have changed so significantly uh, since the start of the pandemic, and it's incredibly important that we have a workforce that is prepared for a very different working environment. From our perspective, we are absolutely committed to supporting local businesses to achieve their growth potential. As part of our new economic vision, we have launched a consultation on our skills strategy for Northern Ireland. This is an ambitious strategy that focuses on delivering significant growth in technical and professional skills through our local colleges and universities. Having access to skills and talent is an essential component of our economy and we would like to capture as many views as possible through the consultation process, which you can access through the department's website. The two programmes that we are celebrating today, Skills Focus and Innovate Us, provide businesses with vital upskilling opportunities to aid them on their innovation journey, or indeed to assist their workforce to gain qualifications and increase their skills levels. Both schemes have been designed to meet the needs of the small to medium sized companies and offer flexible training solutions. In response to the uh, impact of the pandemic, we made the decision to cover the full cost of the Skills Focus programme, given the very challenging circumstances faced by all sectors this year, meaning that both programmes are now fully funded by the department. Uh, as many people listening to this webinar will be aware, there are many benefits to investing in our people, not least the increase in productivity, higher levels of customer satisfaction and improvements in staff motivation. That's certainly backed by the research that we have commissioned through Ulster University, which shows that investing in training and development improves earning potential for the individual. So both companies and employees benefit through these important initiatives. Starting small businesses on their innovation journey is a key aspect of the Innovate Us scheme. Innovation can mean many things to, to many people, but in an economic context, it is about the successful generation and exploitation of new ideas, which is critical uh, to the future prosperity and economic growth. The local colleges play a vital role in delivering both of these programmes. The incredible figures for both is testimony to their hard work, determination and commitment to deliver even in the most challenging of circumstances. Uh, demand for both programmes actually increased during the pandemic uh, and I'm delighted to be here today to hear directly from some of the local businesses who availed of our support. Finally, Denise, I would like to encourage any small or medium-sized business that are out there who are thinking about investing in their teams to take the time uh, to listen to the experiences of our employers here today and to contact their local college to explore the support that is currently available. Thank you, Graham. And now I'm delighted to introduce some of the participants of the Skills Focus programme over the last year.
So joining me now are Tim Griffin from Evan Cruises and Nicola Alford from NRC. Next we have John Harkin from Alchemy Technology Services and Mark McGarty from NWRC. And last but definitely not least from the studio next door, we have Janny Knox from Happy Days NI and Andrea Kennedy from Cirque. So thanks again for coming here today and I look forward to hearing about your involvement with the Skills Focus programme. If I may, Tim, come to you first. Yes, You're very you. welcome. Uh, can you tell me about your business, Tim, and what you set out to achieve through the Skills Focus programme? We own and operate a private rib boat uh, charter business um, and during lockdown, just like everybody else, we, we couldn't operate and we were thinking about getting ready and you know, getting ourselves ready for when lockdown was over and one of the things that we tried to plan for uh, but we could never get the time was to do a tour guiding course for me and my other skipper and my son Ben. Um, NRC offered us this uh, fantastic uh, course online and they helped us uh, with the funding of it because things were bad we weren't able to earn and um, I can't fault it. It was a, it was a brilliant. Uh, it, it helped us um, improve our experiences, and it also helped us develop a better script for our tours. Uh, and going forward with it, it has also enabled us to uh, come up with new experiences. Well, onwards and upwards. Uh, hopefully, yeah. And happy we'll sailing. Keep going. Yes, thank yeah, you very much. Thank you, uh, John. Can I bring you in now? Tell me about your business and its skills. Focus on how they helped you with your business. Yeah, so we set up Alchemy Technology Services in uh, September 19, no, 2018. And um, it's really to create a center of excellence for the implementation of very modern technology into the insurance industry. And also really to bring fresh talent, young people into the industry. And how has Skills Focus supported you in trying to bring this younger generation through? Uh, as we expanded in the organization, we're at 140 people now uh, in the last couple of years, we, we really started to diversify in some of the services we needed. So they, f they really helped us with leadership training. So we did a lot of work there. Uh, system testing and quality assurance was another area the clients started asking us for. So the college offers some excellent training in that and we've, we've availed ourselves of that training. So very much a positive impact on your business from being involved with this? Absolutely marvellous and we're looking at what the next level of training is in each of those areas and additional areas that we're looking at also. That's great to hear, thank you John. Yeah. And last but not least, Jenny, you're very welcome this morning. Jenny, tell me about your business and how important it has been to be involved with Skills Focus. So my business is Happy Days NI and it is a humanist celebrant um, offering all kinds of ceremonies and celebrations for people who don't necessarily want to go down the religious route. So uh, particularly specialising in weddings, but I also do namings for uh, welcoming children or change of name plus um, celebration of life, so funerals, that kind of stuff as well. And so what was really helpful about the course was helping me to focus on how I could reach that diverse group of people. And so uh, the social media aspect was really good for me because as I hadn't really been involved in social media myself, wasn't particularly interested in being involved, but I knew it was somewhere that I needed to get some more experience from. And so the course really took me <laughs> right through from the basics, right through into the dreaming of what I can do into the future. So we'll be talking to uh, your college representative very shortly. And we'll just come to first uh, to Nicola from NRC. Mm -hmm. And how does the college, um, what does the college get out of working on a project like this with the likes of Tim? You know, we really do love working with small and medium enterprises just to get them the training that they need. And it's actually quite exciting because you get to see them progress their business, develop their business, and to really improve, you know, what they do and what they do well. So it's, it's great for, for the college to be involved in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how would you, from the college's perspective, sell the Skills Focus programme to other businesses in Northern Ireland? 
I would say, you know, Skills Focus, it is a fantastic programme to be involved with. It's really interesting. It's really exciting. Um, it's something that you can avail of to help, you know, your business develop, especially just sort of in these different times now during the pandemic. Um, a lot of businesses are now looking to move to be online and to be a wee bit more au fait with social media and sort of online you know, delivery of their services. So it's, it's a fantastic programme to get involved with. And yeah, definitely phone your local college and see what they can offer you. OK. Thanks very much, Nicola. Thank you. Uh, Mark, I'd like to bring you in now on behalf of John. John's business is, I mean, he's so such a big wide range of topics he's dealing with. So how has it worked out between the two of you? So we, we worked together with Alchemy to look at look what other help and support can we give you to help your business to grow and develop. Um, as John mentioned, we, we, we've done software testing, advanced Java and leadership management courses. And at the moment, we're looking at other courses as well that we can, we can progress and move on. So we've worked on leadership management. Um, we've worked on very te technical uh, subjects at, in the Shared Skills Academy, but also on Skills Focus. And uh, so we have a whole mixture of things we can do from, from generic stuff to very specialist stuff. And, um, and the whole approach of Skills Focus is we work with the business, we identify what their uh, training needs are and what their skills gap is. And we will then design a, a bespoke course uh, for that uh, for that business to help them kind of over, overcome and address those skill shortages that they have. I'd say it's safe to say that <laughs> you would have no hesitation in recommending the Skills Focus program to any other business. So look, it's a great program. It's flexible. It's at the moment it's fully funded. Um, we have a whole massive range of courses, not just the Northwest Regional College, but across all the other colleges as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a really good kind of time to, to upskill your staff, to upskill yourself. Uh, and really to put that time and investment in. Very well said. Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, in relation to Jani, if we have, uh, we have you there, Andrea and Cirque. Andrea, in relation to Jani, what a fascinating business this is to work on alongside her. And how has it been for you? How's your journey, journey been? Um, Jani was working on an Innovate Us project. And from that then we started talking about um, skills focus and how she could um, develop her skills in that, in that area, looking at social media. And um, what I find in, in the year that I've been dealing with Jani is that her confidence has dramatically increased, you know, every time I'm, I'm, sp I'm speaking to you. And um, the level two in social media has been incredibly successful. And now she's um, excited about attending the level four in social media and digital marketing as well. What would you say to anybody else thinking of getting involved in any other business with the Skills Focus program from the college's perspective? Um, how good has it been? So Skills Focus Company or Skills Focus Program really gives um, companies an, an opportunity to upskill and to change things for the better and um, we are very excited to be part of that. It is like um, my colleagues have said in the in previous day there, it is a very flexible program and um, we are there to respond to, to what businesses need out there. We're happy to do so. Thank you, Andrea from CERC. Um, if I can bring back in the businesses again, the business owners. Uh, John, with you, your business is expanding. And I mean, you've, you, it was wonderful to hear about the college and how much they enjoy working with you as well. Yeah. Um, in terms of your business, how can you see bringing this into the future? I think the staff themselves are finding this very enriching. You know, a lot of people want to learn. They want to be the best versions of themselves they can be, I think is the phrase being used and it really helps with our staff retention uh, the fact that we are willing to spend the time and the fact that the college has become such a strong partner that understands our culture so when they deliver the courses they deliver it in the context of the type of company and the type of service that we want to deliver uh, and i think that's unique yeah. and Jani, exciting plans for you as well for the future doing the social media course um, as part of that skills focus is exactly what it says. It was a skills focus and it helped me to focus on the skills that I needed um, to move forward. And now I do have that confidence. I may not have put all of those skills in place yet, but they're coming. Um, and also I'm cascading that knowledge to my colleagues and my other celebrant colleagues in Northern Ireland and how to do it. So we have a, a focus group on that. So it has been absolutely brilliant and I've recommended the course to my colleagues as well. That's Thank brilliant. you so much. We wish you all the very best for the future, Johnny. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you to all the college staff and all the employers who took the time out to come here today to share their experience of the Skills Focus and Innovate Us programmes with us. It's been wonderful to hear the positive impact these programmes are having in what has been a difficult year.
And to close today's event, we will now hear from the Department for the Economy's Further Education Director, Beverly Harrison. Welcome, Beverly. Thank you. Thank you, Denise, and thank you to all of our speakers for contributing today to the employers who have shared their experience of the programmes with us and the college staff who have worked so hard to deliver these departmental programmes. During my time as Further Education Director, these programmes have demonstrated the ambition and willingness of Northern Ireland's small and medium-sized businesses to invest in upskilling their employees by utilising the support and expertise available from the six colleges. This contributes to increased innovation and productivity for those companies, helping to deliver a more sustainable economy for Northern Ireland. The further education sector business teams have had their highest performing year on these DFE funded programmes. As you've already heard today, the colleges have delivered skills pro focused projects to over a thousand businesses during the last year with 2,300 employees enrolled in qualifications at level two and above. And through the Innovate Us programme, over 550 projects have been delivered across the six colleges in priority sectors, including digital and creative industries and adva advanced manufacturing and engineering. The 2021 financial year allowed the sector to demonstrate their capacity and their capability to deliver under very challenging circumstances. Collaborative online skills delivery and mentoring has been a key tool for maintaining high level of business engagement. The upskilling and mentoring provided by the FE sector has been critical in moving these programmes forward. Considering these programmes have historically been based on face-to-face -face training delivery, these are remarkable figures given the challenges that were presented by COVID-19 and the complete move to virtual learning. However, you'll not be surprised to know that colleges already had extensive expertise in delivering blended learning solutions and therefore were well placed to provide quality online delivery and relevant support through their virtual learning environments. Despite the challenges, college staffs has con have continued working with employers to assess and offer the best solutions available to address their skills needs. In fact, they've reached new audiences and established new relationships with local industry during the pandemic. This in turn further develops the expertise and curriculum content that the college can offer. The provision of alternative skills from level two to level seven for individuals on furlough and those at risk, unfortunately, of redundancy have been key in future proofing the requirements for the Northern Ireland economy across these priority areas. The business engagement teams are currently working in partnership to design the next phase of the programme and this will be based on the recent Northern Ireland strategic requirements. This has been a really key time for the sector to de demonstrate their ability and responsiveness in curriculum development. It is a real testament to the expertise and dedication of our FE sector and the commitment to supporting our local employees that has shone through and indeed for all the learners in the section. Throughout the periods of additional restrictions, the college adapted quickly and flexibility to meet each changing circumstances and to ensure the best outcome for all our learners. From moving to a blended approach in September to distance learning and a real recognition by the staff that this was unsettling for learners and a very challenging time for them. However, considerable progress has been made in recent weeks to facilitate the return to face-to-face -face learning and for increasing number of learners to be in college. This is very welcome news and we look forward to the next Emerjack academic year being a return to a normal learning environment. To conclude, I want to say a huge personal thank you to college staff for their creativity and determination 
and their achievement of quality outcomes. Well done. And a particular thanks to those businesses represented here today who have taken time out to share their experiences and to demonstrate the real impacts of the support they received. Thank you very much, Beverly. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that concludes our event for today. On behalf of the Department for the Economy, I want to thank all our contributors and I hope you all enjoyed watching. Hopefully, next year's event will be able to take place in more normal circumstances. Till then, thank you and take care.